Welcome to Searching the Literature for a Research Paper for Physiology Majors, Physiology 3062W. This is the summer of 2018. Welcome to the research paper for physiology majors, searching the literature, physiology 3062W. Several years ago, I asked the students in this class to list some of their sources for scientific information. As you can see from the graph, there were a lot of different places that the students would go to find information for technical topics. In addition to some of the usual suspects like PubMed or Medline, you'd also see that some individuals were uh, included like U of M professors and TAs. I like that. I like to think that I could be a source for information for any of you. The most important thing in relying on a site for scientific information is the site's credibility. Some sites that claim to offer verified information are filled with advertisements and propaganda meant to influence its readers. This is especially true if you're looking at papers related to nutritional supplements. In selecting the sites that you will use to gather information, be critical in your evaluation of the information that they provide and hopefully you'll find sources that you can rely on that will help you to build the story for your paper. So, in order to search for this information, you're going to have to have a strategy. You'll need to pick your main topic and then you'll need to find some preliminary sources. Now, uh, to pick your topic you'll need to search for something. Usually just the topic name will get you some preliminary sources, but as you start to uh, collect sources you'll also want to um, narrow down your search area because you'll find that some will be extremely relevant to what you're interested in and some will not. So this is an important point in narrowing down your search area. Then you'll be able to define some information, uh, some papers that you're uh, wanting to focus on and you can use those to find your one or two primary resources. Now what I've done is created a flowchart for, uh, that represents a decision tree for making a walk through the scientific literature. Let's try that out. So you begin by picking your research topics and then you need to decide, do I know any words related to this topic that I can use to help me search? And we'll call those your keywords. And so you'll need to define some keywords. Another way to start out this search, however, is to find some general reference to that topic area. Maybe it's your textbook for physiology or some uh, website that you know that's related to, if it's a disease, maybe there's an organization that has a website and that can be a place that you start to get some general information and to help you get some key words. Once you've got some key words, you can start doing your literature research to see what's available. And that literature search is going to probably turn out to have thousands of hits. And with that many, it's just too much for you to go through uh, on its own. So you'll want to look through a few of the titles to see if you can find a few potential sources that might be useful to you. And if you find a few titles that you're interested in, one of the things to help you get a little bit more information without reading the whole paper is to read the article abstract, which should be a summary of what the project is, why they did it, what kind of techniques they used, and what kind of conclusions were they able to draw. And hopefully that can help you to narrow down some of the, uh, through some of the papers, which ones you might be more interested in than others. Now, once you get to this point, you can say, hey, I found the articles I need. I don't need to search anymore. But you have to decide, are you satisfied with your search? And, of course, that's a yes or no answer. 
And if the answer is no, uh, one of the things you'll need to decide is, do I need to pick a different topic? Um, maybe you did a search and you didn't find very many papers, or all the papers you found were more than 10 years old, and there's nothing recent published on that topic area. So if you need a new topic, this is a no. Uh, or if you don't need a new topic, then you can perhaps uh, get some more keywords that help you with your um, search to refine it, to narrow it down, and then you can go back through the system again. However, if the answer is yes, then you start at the beginning and you start thinking about what's my topic and um, how do I get started with keywords for my new topic and uh, maybe again you consult a general reference, but the idea is eventually to get to the point where you can um, get some keywords, do your literature search, review the search results, find some papers, and then read some abstracts so that you find the papers that are most, uh, most promising. Now, if you were satisfied with the results of your search, you need to also check in with your paper advisor to see if they think that the papers are good for you to continue with or do they have some recommendations. Now, if your advisor says no, again, you need to decide what am I going to do about that, and it may be that you need a new topic, in which case you, uh, um, if you need a new topic, you go back to the beginning. If you don't need a new topic, maybe you just need some different keywords, and often your advisor can suggest some keywords that can help you to refine your search so that it's more focused when you do the literature review, and the papers that you get are much more related to what you really want to uh, work on for your research paper. Now, if your advisor says yes, you can pick your primary papers, your support papers, and you can begin your report, and the sun will shine on your project. This is my search flow, but you can make your own uh, flowchart to get through uh, the search strategy so that you can find papers. The bottom line is, at the end of it all, You'd like to pick some primary papers so that you can begin the process of putting your information together for a report for this semester. Now, as I said in the previous presentation, you can pick a wide variety of topics related to human physiology. These are just a few, cardiovascular physiology, respiratory physiology, the gastrointestinal tract, uh, muscle, uh, both building of muscle and, and exercise-based um, um, development of muscle or diseases that affect it, the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, the kidneys, uh, endocrine systems, metabolism, or something that I haven't picked up and put on this slide. You get to pick your topic. That's one of the things I like about this class is that you get to write about something that you're interested in. In brainstorming keywords, uh, these are things I often think about. Uh, can I think of things related to the organ system? Can I think of uh, terms that might be related to the normal functional properties or to a disease state or a therapy or what else? Um, anything that comes to mind that's related to your key topic, uh, your topic can be a keyword. Then you'll want to think about where am I going to be searching. And um, while you may choose to use the um, databases like PubMed, which is freely available and you can search it from anywhere, or Google Scholar, which is freely available and you can use it from anywhere, one of the things to remember is that the biomedical library can be a great resource. And it might be the place that you want to start, even if you're searching through PubMed because the university subscribes to a wide number of uh, scientific journals. Now, in general, these days, a lot of the information that you'll find on a PubMed search will be publicly available, and you can search for it, you can download the paper, you can read it at, at uh, any time you want, and that's great. But you'll find a few that will require subscriptions for you to access the paper and if you are accessing PubMed 
through the biomedical library and you get to that research paper, um, the journal site will recognize that you come from an institution that has a subscription. And then some of these papers that uh, you may have found that uh, outside of the university uh, search system, uh, which may have charged you a fee, will now be free because your student fees help pay for those fees, those subscription fees. And so you should take advantage of that when you sort of get stuck. If you're you know somewhere and it's just easy to pop up the PubMed um, website and search from there, that's fine. But if you find a resource that they're requesting money before they'll let you download the paper, I pull back, do the search through uh, the biomedical library's PubMed site, and um, more times than not, you'll find that uh, you can download those papers for free. Um, other sites that are uh, possible, WebMD can give you some information, uh, but probably not research papers, as well as the Mayo Clinic can give you some information on different excuse me, different disorders, but not necessarily research papers. Uh, the same is true for uh, New York Times um, or the Star Tribune or the Pioneer Press. These are some topics that have been used by students in previous classes, and I just provide them here as sort of a, perhaps to uh, prime the pump. If you're trying to think of a topic, maybe this is a place uh, where you find some information that will um, get you started. And once you're started and you start to find some papers, then you can narrow it down to whatever um, you are interested in specifically. Uh, PubMed is a search as a database that's maintained by the National Library of Medicine in Bethesda, Maryland. Um, this database uh, includes most scientific papers published all over the world. Um, it's pretty comprehensive and you can put in your own keywords and access to the results of the searches are open to the general public, as I said before. Once you get down to the level of identifying papers and wanting to get your own copies of the papers, that's where you may have access issues and uh, that's where you may want to decide to go through the Biomedical Library website. Medline uh, or Ovid Medline, you can only access through the uh, Biomedical Library website and uh, that's because it requires, it's a specific interface and it goes to the same database as PubMed but it has a, a different interface that is um, provides you an, a nice mechanism for making a, uh, a list of searches that provide some hierarchy. Uh, that is that you can easily see how you've added one keyword and how it's changed your search results and then add another keyword and see how it changes your search results and then you can step back if you like or step forward again with another keyword and it does require that you go through the biomedical library for you to use the Ovid search um, engine. Um, they also provide an index of additional search terms that you can use to um, to narrow down your searches. Uh, these are called MeSH terms. These are uh, terms that have been assigned to the papers by people who work for OVEN. Um, I um, use both, but sometimes I prefer the OVID uh, type of search. And I'll do another presentation that gives you a comparison of the same search done essentially with PubMed or with OVID, and uh, you can see the differences that way. Now, um, you could just go to the library. Uh, you can go to the biomedical library. Uh, it's uh, on campus. It's open um, most days. Um, and it provides in not only computer resources, but the librarians there can help students with their searches. They actually have some people there who are knowledgeable about the physiology-based resources and can give you some help in setting up a search strategy. Um, the other thing is is that um, it's still a place where you can find a printed copy of a journal and, uh, and so if you uh, would like to read it in the uh, journal, uh, if you'd like to photocopy it from the journal, 
rather than downloading and printing. Um, if you um, can't find a article online uh, or you can't find a copy that you can download online, sometimes they'll have a hard copy of it in the library that you can go and read and so that's useful too because they actually still have more um, traditional uh, publications uh, which uh, send them a copy of each issue of the journal uh, then they actually have online subscriptions. Uh, if you don't know how to get to the biomedical library, uh, you can find it on this map. And it's between the Phillips Weinstein Building, the PWB Building, and the University of Minnesota Medical Center. And you can see that here where this is the medical center and here's the uh, gray uh, concrete of the PWB building. So it's kind of sandwiched in between there. And of course on the um, north side of this they've torn down the Masonic Hospital or yeah, the Masonic Research Building and they're going to be building the new medical school education building. So that construction zone is on that far side of the of Deal Hall, the biomedical library. So you should try a search or two. You can start it with PubMed or some other search engine. Narrow your search by adding keywords. Read through some of the titles and abstracts to find papers you're interested in. And if you've got a few candidate papers, you might even try reading the full introductions of the papers because that can provide you some of the background information that says this is why we did our experiments. This is why we hypothesized that we could find something new about this particular topic is based on this background information that we're providing in this introduction. As I said, I'm going to uh, add to this section of the site a um, video of me going through a PubMed search and a Ovid Medline search so you can uh, view those as well. I hope that your searches go well. If you have questions, please let me know.